It's now becoming increasingly obvious how the United States splits apart politically. We're seeing it now in the aftermath of the 2018 midterm elections where Democrats are manufacturing fabricated votes to try to steal the election results in Florida, Arizona, Georgia, and California, and certainly other states have already happened. And this is likely going to lead to many on the right, the, the conservatives, saying that they simply refuse to accept the Democrat majority in the House or they refuse to accept subpoenas from members of the House. And this will likely uh, go together with people on the left at the next election, 2020. Well, actually, it's already happened. From 2016, the people on the left say they refuse to accept President Trump as the president. And they refuse to accept Brett Kavanaugh as a confirmed judge on the U.S. Supreme Court. And they're trying to impeach him because they don't believe that his appointment and confirmation is legitimate. So fast forward this a couple years to 2020, and let's say Trump wins re-election. No doubt the left will come up with another insane reason claiming that it was stolen. But they will try to steal the election for real. And if they do steal the election because they have so many illegals voting and so many fraudulent votes and so many manufactured ballots, then the people on the right might say, no, this was stolen. The point is, <laughs> the point is, the very fabric of society is based on this idea that both parties agree in advance to the outcome of the election, even if they don't win. And that is now gone. And so we're going to have a bifurcation of the political power in the country, where you're going to have states like California saying things like, well, we don't recognize the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., because the court is, let's say, six to three conservative if, if Ginsburg retires and another Supreme Court justice is confirmed by Trump. Uh, Amy Barrett is the most likely choice. So six to three. A lot of liberals would just say, we, we no longer recognize the Supreme Court. We're not going to abide by its decisions. <laughs> right? Likewise, let's say that in Florida, they steal the vote for, for Democrats, and they have Gillum as the governor. That would be only by theft and fraud. And many people in Florida would say, we don't recognize Gillum as the governor. That's, that election was absolutely stolen after the fact, because Gillum had lost on election day, and then over the subsequent, what, four or five days, Democrats fabricated, manufactured fake votes to make Gillum the winner, and that is not legitimate. We don't recognize Gillum as the governor of Florida. That is a, a likelihood, as I see it. So as this phenomenon becomes exacerbated, you'll, you're going to see the country split into two political parties, but also within each state there can be a liberal split versus a conservative split within a state like California, for example where the West Coast goes full liberal and the rest of it goes conservative, or maybe north-south in, in California. Uh, in Texas, you know, Austin, Dallas, and Houston are very liberal. The rest of the state, well, maybe San Antonio too, but the rest of the state, rural Texas, is very conservative. So you're going to have these splits, but it won't be just north-south of the entire country like in the Civil War. It's going to be splits within each state, and then another split at the national level. This is how the system falls apart. And as this is happening, it's not hard to imagine that there could be armed groups on either side, maybe Antifa on the left, maybe uh, patriots on the right, or you know, uh, former law enforcement, former military, that would go in and occupy vote counting headquarters to make sure that the votes are counted in their favor and that this seemingly armed occupation by either side could escalate with the other side demanding a stand down and could escalate into a shooting war at, let's say, a county headquarters building or, or even a state capitol building or something like that. That's not hard to imagine. This is how things start. In, in the 2018 midterms, I think this was the pivot point right here. This is the point where America really began to split. 
well, I guess I guess 2016 was was really the point, but it's accelerated in 2018 to the point where now conservatives are saying they don't trust the, the election outcomes because liberals are stealing the election. And of course, liberals claim that Trump stole the election in 2016, although they don't have a shred of evidence that that, that actually happened. And there's plenty of evidence that the midterms are being stolen in Florida. There are people on the record right now signed affidavits saying that they saw uh, voters, uh, I'm sorry, uh, workers in the vote counting center ordered to fill out blank ballots in a fraudulent fashion. That's on the record now. That's hard evidence of voter fraud. So I ask you this question then. Should Democrats, I mean, Democrats always commit election fraud, electioneering. They're engaged in massive censorship via the tech giants, which is massive election meddling. Democrats are trying to steal votes, trying to steal elections. They're trying to nullify the elections they don't win. They're trying to impeach everybody that they don't want to have power. They're calling for the new DOJ uh, acting attorney general, Whitaker, to, to recuse himself because they don't want anybody to have power except a deep state Democrat. My question to you is, should Democrats even be allowed to participate in an election system if they don't agree to abide by the rules? Or the outcome. Why are we, why are we even having elections, if the Democrats we already know in advance they're going to try to steal it, they're going to commit fraud, and if they can't commit enough fraud to steal the election, they're going to declare the outcome to be null and void. Why, why are we even trying to participate in society with Democrats because they are not compatible with a democracy? They belong in an authoritarian communist regime, which is what they want. They want to turn America into that. They want to turn California into that. They've practically succeeded there. Well, I say we're not going to let them do that to America, but if they want to move away and just go to Venezuela or go to Cuba or go to North Korea or go to China and become illegal immigrants in those countries and join the communist revolution there, go for it. Get out of America because you're not Americans. You don't qualify to be Americans and you don't have the right to participate in democracy because you don't respect the rules of due process in fair and free elections. That's the bottom line. And so as that understanding spreads across society, guess what's going to happen? Elections are going to become, over time, meaningless because no side will trust the other side, but especially we the people, those of us who are patriots who love America, we know that we cannot trust the outcomes of any elections that, that the Democrats control because they will steal everything. And so there's going to come a day, and it, it has possibly already started, or it may happen in 2020. We'll see. There's going to come a day when patriots stand up and say, no, we will not let you steal our country any longer. We're going to have, I don't know, a thousand men here with force to occupy this building and demand honest election counting and demand an end to the illegal vote manufacturing by the left. Now, I'm not calling, I'm not calling for any kind of a, an armed revolution or an armed conflict. You know, I always prefer peace. I'm just analyzing where this is going, and it's not hard to see that this is probably going at some point to a scenario where there is armed conflict between the two sides because it seems that the two sides, the Democrats and the Republicans, cannot coexist in society. And I would say the Democrats can't coexist in any democracy, period. The Republicans are perfectly willing to follow the rules. In fact, they follow rules to a fault, almost. The bottom line is the country seems primed right now for extreme conflict and refusal to accept the other party in power. And that's if you look throughout history, that's when countries split apart. That's when things happen. That's when you end up with a civil war or secession or the fall of the Soviet Union, perhaps. And when these things happen, they are never pretty. You look at, you know, I, I mentioned recently in a podcast a guy I know who survived the Bosnia War in the 1990s. Bosnian conflict. It was a civil war, essentially. It wasn't pretty. The stories that, that he has about that are pretty horrifying. 
Uh, you look throughout history, the fall of the Soviet Union, and then conflict between Russia and Georgia, for example. As you look at the balkanization of Western Europe that took place after that, and it wasn't all peaceful. And you can go in American history and look at the Civil War as well. There was a lot of disagreement about who should govern and what should be the fabric of the nation. And many, many people died in that conflict. I don't, I don't know the exact number, but it seems like it was a very large number, like a million people, maybe more. I'd have to check that. But look, we are, it's, it's so clear. We're headed in this direction. It's so obvious at this point. There's no question that America is headed in this direction. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to back down from protecting America, protecting the Electoral College, protecting our Constitution, defending the Second Amendment, defending the First Amendment, demanding free speech rights. I'm not backing down from any of that. No way. Not a chance. I'm not going to live as a slave. You know, live free or die is a slogan that's very popular in Texas for good reason. We are not going to ever surrender to some kind of insane totalitarian left-wing regime. That's not the way that we operate, period. And at the same time, I don't think that the people on the left are going to back down because they're, they're so delusional and brainwashed, they've told themselves they're fighting Hitler. <laughs> actual Hitler. Not metaphorical Hitler, but actual Hitler. They think Trump is actually, literally Hitler. That's the way they talk. And so they think that they have to uh, defeat Trumpism and defeat the GOP and, and uh, by any means necessary. They, they think that Christianity is evil. And of course, they worship Satanism. And they, they worship you know, atheism or Satanism, and they, they think Christians are bad people. And the, the left, of course, wants a totalitarian regime to have absolute control over everything you're allowed to speak or think or publish or even read. And that, to them, is called tolerance, by the way. That's called diversity. To them, that's freedom. You're free to read whatever the state tells you you're allowed to read. So it seems like the left is not going to back down either. They are not willing to back down from their distorted dogma, and they're willing to kill people to defend their twisted belief system. They're willing to kill people because they've already called for mass killing of conservatives and killing the president and killing conservative senators and so on. That is very clear. They will kill people to defend their twisted, distorted dogma. And so you combine these two sides here where you have conservatives like, like myself who are absolutely not willing to give up our freedoms. And you have these deranged totalitarian leftists who are absolutely willing to kill people to defend their twisted beliefs and they're not backing down. And you throw those two things in the pot and what kind of recipe are you making there? What kind of stew are you stewing? And the answer is civil war. That's what's coming. It's very clear at this, at this point. That's what's coming. So I don't see that this is avoidable. I think it's just a matter of escalation and timing. I don't know what the trigger event is going to be that ultimately triggers this thing. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's 2020 or if we've, we've already started the trigger event with the theft of elections in Florida. I am on the record, you may recall me saying, that Trump will be the last president. This is a prediction. Trump will be the last president of the United States as we know it. But that could extend all the way to 2024 or even shortly after if there's an election there that is highly contested. And, you know, the, the 2024 election where Trump obviously cannot run again. What if a Democrat takes power by stealing the election and then the GOP half of the nation says we don't accept it? This is it. We absolutely do not accept this Ill illegitimate election. It can fracture from that point. So get ready, folks. This is happening. <laughs> this, is, this is coming. America will never be the same. America is not healing right now politically. It is fracturing, and that's what the globalists want. And that's what the left wing wants. Because they don't want America to be a sovereign nation that defends its borders, that protects its civil liberties, and that resists the march of liberalism and globalism that wants to turn every nation in the world 
into a slave state under authoritarian, tyrannical control. So thank you for listening. This is Mike Adams here. You can listen to more of my podcasts at healthrangerreport.com. Take care. Learn more at healthrangerreport.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab-verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.